So, as you guys can watch the previous video, tonight I am going to be recording a few series of all my parts installs tonight and the Tomei uh, cat back and um, downpipe. So, the first install that we're going to do is the Cobb Access port, right? Um, obviously, you get this in a box and your access port's inside of it, right? Um, I'm going to show you guys, even though most of you guys know how to do this, I'm just going to post it up just to show what you guys do in order to pick the right map and anything like that. So let's get to it. Obviously, when you get your Subaru um, Cobb access port, you open it up, right? You're going to sit here and see this little uh, thing telling you that you have to update the access port and all that, which... By the way, I don't have my laptop on me because I have it charging. So, anytime you guys get a Cobb access port, you want to make sure that you get the latest framework for the access port. Or some of the maps, custom maps and all that, might not work. It'll make it a whole lot easier on your tuner if you just plug it into your computer and update it. Alright? Do all the tuners a favor, alright? Just update your access port. That way when we send you a map, it takes the map with no issue. What you also get in it is this right here the actual pouch and this is kind of hard holding this big camera but we're gonna get this open for you guys and voila so you're gonna have the usb now here goes a little tip for you guys for the usbs some of you guys may notice if you guys lose this one and you randomly get a usb micro usb and try to plug it into the access port for your computer it might not work and here's why some micro usbs are only primarily for charging i'm i'm i can't see if you guys can see me in the light i'm trying to get as much light as possible but some micro usbs are made strictly for charging and they're not for data transfer well most of micro usbs are data transfers and chargers at the same time those are the ones that you need um, so anybody that tries to hook up their micro USB and it can't won't connect or anything like that You have to make sure you get one that is data compatible to be able to transfer the data from the access port, right? So you have that um, You have a little guide pretty much showing you how to install all this But we don't need that today. This is brand new. I Think they just started putting these in the cars because I've never seen it in any other access port um yeah, if you flash this over, anything other than a Cobb map, like if you have Ecutech on your car or anything like that, probably gonna damage something. Could have this little fuzzy fuzzy, and voila, you have your Cobb access port. Maps are preloaded. Frame frameware updates with access port manager, which means you have to go on your laptop or your desktop or whatever type of computer you have and you have to download the access port manager off of the Cobb's website. You then use that USB and you connect it right here on the side and it will pretty much connect to it automatically and it will ask for an update. You hit update and we'll do that. But we're gonna skip the update part just for my car only until I go upstairs and uh, get my laptop um over here you have the case for it and all that i won't personally need the case because what i ended up doing and if you guys saw in my previous video i have like a right angle usb um i actually got the mount for it right here so it's probably in one of those boxes for the tomei exhaust and it's pretty much just gonna be ran up through here up to here and I won't be able to tune the problem with these mounts for any body that's watching whoever made these mounts didn't take into account that tuners that tune the car that put their harness up through here those tuners don't have a super long usb cable to run all the way over there because we need the access port connected to the car another thing is that when the access port actually sits up here what happens is as it sits up here there's no room to even plug in the usb 
that is why I got a right angle USB and I'm hoping that it works because like I said some are data and some are not data transfers and that's something you have to look out for so besides that in this box you'll find the power cable all right so let me put that right there you'll find the actual cable needed to connect to the OBD port you also will find this little mount which is not a bad mount to be honest it's really not a bad mount it's just hard to find an actual like I kind of find these always coming off no matter where you put them at in the car I always manage to find them coming off I know some people actually get like a thicker tape and it works just fine um and then right in here you will find the access port cable that connects to the OBD um, just beware that some of these cables those little pins on the side of here I don't know if this camera is gonna actually like zoom in on it but there's like these little pins right here sometimes these become damaged and then when you try to plug this into the access port it actually just <laughs> falls right out so please try not to damage them so what we're gonna do and I'm gonna reach under here it's right there make sure that it's angled like this and now that it's plugged in so now what I'm gonna do if I can just angle this camera just right for you guys sorry I'm this is kind of a pain I'm gonna sit here and plug this in right here voila and I'm also going to remove this film if I can this film's like on there hardcore alright so I got the film removed and this is the first screen that you're going to see on these access ports install now for those that actually buy access ports you need to make sure when you go buy an access port that somebody writes down on a piece of paper their name the time the date and probably uh, your name also and make sure that they go to this screen and make sure it says install because if it doesn't stay installed then the access port you won't be able to use it because it's married to another car and it's pretty much game over so what's gonna happen is we're gonna hit install and it's gonna confirm that it matches yep that it's gonna match the identification yes it's 2016 USDM STI we're gonna hit continue um, these maps are actually listed on cop site and you can see what's required for each map that you need stage zero is pretty much the OEM map but it works for cop like you can see all the data from it and all that there's no issues whatsoever the stage 191 is if I'm not mistaken uh, like a cap back um, stock intake uh, stock downpipe on 91 fuel um, stage 193 is the same thing it's just fueling and then if you're on like California fuel which is like really really bad you use this ACN 91 I'm sorry if this fan out here is making a whole bunch of noise I won't know until I you know record like edit this whole video you have an economy mode but honestly guys just stay off the stay out of boost that's all you have to do just stay out of boost and you're good to go valet mode is for if you drop your car off with family or at a shop it limits the rpm and speed um, that the car can actually be pushed uh, stage one plus sf now these is where people get kind of confused sf means the cob sf intake it doesn't say aem it doesn't say map performance it doesn't say purin it doesn't say ets it says cob sf if you manage to put an aem intake with that map you're probably going to have a bad day i'm just going to point that out to you guys right a lot of people do that and people buy burple tunes from me and i'm like Yo, you have an AEM intake or you have some weird intake what Cobb OTS map are you running and they're like oh the one that says SF and I'm like yeah you want to blow up your car because that's what's going to happen don't do that 
run the map that is for your mods. There's such there's such a big thing about how Cobb OTS maps blew up their car and all that. But what most of these people don't tell you is, is that they had the wrong parts on the car. You know how many cars I've tuned that were running on a Cobb OTS map and they were running a EBCS, they were running some, some intake that it's not even made for the Cobb SF map OTS. Um, just running mods that they're not supposed to run and then they sit there and cry like little babies that they're that the Cobb OTS map blew up their car nah homie the Cobb OTS map didn't blow up your car you blew up your car when you decided to put parts on your car that were mismatching and not made for the Cobb OTS the Cobb OTS maps are pretty reliable they run on the little rich side but that's all just for safety features okay the Cobb OTS map itself is not going to blow up your car. If you're running a Cobb OTS map and your car magically decides to blow up, it was probably because either you didn't do maintenance enough, your engine was already on its way out, or you probably put it in like 5th or 6th at like 1000 RPM and just decided to say, YOLO, I'm just going to send it at a low RPM and a rod just chunked out your block. You can't blame them for that. All right, just use the right parts. So, if you keep going down, you'll see stage two. Stage two is for guys that add a downpipe. It can be a stock cat back or it can be aftermarket cat back. The main thing from stage one to stage two is a downpipe. Okay. The main difference from having just stage two and stage two plus, the plus means that you have an intake on the car. So all these are stage two, just fuel valet. And then you have stage three, the 1050X, which is the car, uh, um, ID 1050s, if you have injectors and you have to be stage two technically. So you have to have a downpipe. You have to have uh, either a stock or a Cobb SF, if I'm not mistaken and that's pretty much it so on this car right now it is completely stock i don't want to use the oem mapping so i'm going to use a stage one it does have a per in uh intake so i'm still just going to use this uh stage one 93 because i have 93 so i'm going to click on it and you get this little warning just hit continue again and hit continue again and it's going to take you through this long process that decides it wants to take 10 minutes maybe 15 maybe 30 minutes it just doesn't matter so we'll be back once this gets completed all right so now we are back and honestly it actually didn't take that long it was probably like five to ten minutes so please turn and leave the ignition to off so we are going to hit this car fully off and then we are going to hit continue all right then we have to do the on so two two uh, clicks to turn it to the on position and then we're gonna hit okay And then we're gonna turn it off. <laughs> it is very important that you guys follow this. You need to turn it off for at least 15 seconds before restarting the car. If you try to start up the car instantly, sometimes the car takes longer to crank, uh, and sometimes the ECU doesn't actually do the learning reset, and then you have some you know, minor issues until you actually redo this whole process. So. We're gonna hit continue. And remember to connect to Access Core Manager afterwards and update the ECU. All right, so we're not gonna fully turn it on because then I'll be stupid because I have to work on the exhaust soon. But we'll, we'll run through um, the basics of this. So you have the gauges, the performance, troubleshooting, and tune, and uninstall. If you ever want to sell your access port, 
then all you have to do is come down here and install the access board. Then it's ready to be sold and the next buyer can just go repeat the process and install it. Tune, tune is where you make adjustments. So you can make adjustments, adjust the idle, adjust the timing, flat foot shift, launch control, and a button to reset all that. Uh, what else? You just hit back, change ECU map. So anytime your tuner sends you a new map, don't do real time, do actual reflash and you click that and follow the directions. Uh, restore OTS maps, those are for people that have already connected the car to the access port manager and deleted all the OTS maps and everything off of it. You can restore all the um, updated OTS maps with just hitting this button. And then if you need to know what current map is on the car, you can literally just click that and it will tell you which map you have on the car. You have troubleshooting, which will show the I am readiness, readiness. So anything for those the guys that have to get everything checked out on the car and for emissions, that's all right there. You literally have to do drive cycles to get those to be ready. Um, identify vehicle will literally tell you what vehicle um, the car is telling the cop that it is. So all that did was take a big snapshot of the car and I guess logging. Um, I've never used it to be honest, so you can view it on Access Port Manager. Read codes, anytime you have the check engine light, you can literally read the codes, you just have to hit that. It's gonna scan for codes and there's no codes found. Reset ECU, anytime your ECU is doing anything stupid like knock or anything like that, you can literally just hit this button and it's gonna clear the ECU and reset all the learning, all that. Um, that's probably good to do after uh, running a map for some time or if you had a boost leak or something in the car, learn the boost leak. Uh, you might wanna just reset that after you fix the boost leak. Uh, then you have performance. I honestly don't ever use the performance tab. It's like pointless. If you want to get actual times, then go to the track and get your time. All right, there's literally no point in doing this. And then you have gauges. So I'm going to show you guys how I normally set these up for customers. So normally I'll go to six gauges. And first one, first one's going to be AF correction. Second one is going to be AF learning one. Then down here we are going to do uh, AF sensor one ratio. And then over here we are going to go down until dynamic advanced multiplier. And then probably feedback knock. Definitely went past it. Sorry, guys. Feedback knock. And feedback learn. That's normally how I set it up. The boost gauge, you literally have right there in the car. It's literally right there. Um, you can put the boost on here. I would probably maybe replace one of these, maybe the learning, to be honest. I would probably just do the correction. Uh, uh, let's leave the learning up there and we will change this to correction and change this to boost. We can do that. Even though you have boost up there, don't really matter to have it down here. This is how I normally set it up. Now for you guys wanting to uh, you know, your tuner sends you a list of everything to data log. Um, units, just keep it where it's at. Configure data log. Now, I'm going to go down the list of normally things I tell customers to data log. Uh, correction one, learning one, air fuel sensor one ratio. I don't know how some people get this messed up. Don't use the current, don't use the volts use the ratio all right 
Um, ABCS left. We can do left and right. Um, then we keep going down. We want battery volts. Closed loop for the target. Uh, closed loop switch. Actually, no, not on these. We don't really need that. Um, definitely dynamic advanced multiplier. This is going to tell you how happy the car is overall. One is super happy. Anything over that, under that, is uh, not unhappy. We're definitely going to have feedback knock and find knock learn. Um, ignition timing, injector duty cycle for sure. Not going to worry about any of those. We definitely want math volts. Uh, for the guys doing SD, probably best to just hit that. You know, SD has a speed density. Um, RPM for sure. Uh, required torque is, you definitely need this. And roughness, um, I don't normally tell customers to log roughness one through four unless they're having misfires. And once you log these four, you can kind of tell which cylinder is the one that's misfiring. Then you can kind of judge if it's spark plugs or coils or whatever. Um, SI drive mode for sure. TD boost error is going to tell us the boost error. Um, and vehicle speed. And wastegate duty. And that's pretty much it. Then you just hit the back button. And any time that you hit this little middle button and it goes starts like that, that's when the data log starts. And you just hit it again, and that saves the data log. All right, so that was the video on installing the Cobb Access port, plus with a little bit of more information for you guys, a little education, a little video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now, the next video is probably going to be let me go out and see because I don't know what let me turn this off I'm not totally sure which part I'm going to install next um, probably probably the flex fuel kit to be honest and well they turned off my light my brother was here and he definitely turned off my light so I gotta come back over here and plug this back in I'm still technically waiting for this car to cool down it's pretty cool down now but i want to get everything taken care of that i need to up here first i think now we are going to do the flex fuel kit next yeah we're just going to do the flex fuel kit next because i have to take most of that stuff off anyway and that will kind of play into uh doing the injectors as well so hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please hit the like button uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and be on the lookout for next videos. Peace out.